Hello, welcome to the Monday, March 1st, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Let's first take a look at what we got in Darius this weekend. Guy wrote up a phishing attack that he observed in which the attacker is claiming that you're using a classic version of Outlook and you need to essentially click on a link and log in in order to retain access to your email. So Typical create urgency and of course with uh, vendors all the time updating software and no longer supporting old access methods, a user may very well find this uh, to be important enough to click on and then to log in. Outlook credentials always a thing that attackers like to collect. Because once they have access to your email, they often then leverage that access for a business email compromise. And then we got a quick update from Jim about the Satori botnet that he wrote about a couple of weeks ago that the scan port 26. He did a quick geolocation on the attackers that he saw scanning here. Well, a heavy concentration in South Korea, which we often have for these type of botnets. Nothing really that's sort of terribly in common to the sources of these attacks. And researchers at the Ruhr University of Bochum and North Carolina State University took a closer look at the Alexa skill ecosystem and various security issues within that ecosystem. If you are publishing a skill with Amazon for use with Alexa, essentially, Amazon is doing sort of the voice recognition part for you and then sending a request back to an API that you provide. There's an initial vetting of uh, these skills, but of course, since the actual service is provided by your API, not by code residing with Amazon, it's certainly possible for you to later alter the code. Another issue that they looked into it is where you have uh, various skills with the same invocation. So the same key phrase that's being used uh, to invoke a particular skill. And Alexa has a somewhat uh, opaque algorithm in how it will prioritize skills in that case. One somewhat concerning issue that they found, now this was uh, just uh, by uh, publishing a couple skills uh, with identical invocations was that skills that actually ask for more information appear to be prioritized. Other uh, more obvious factors, of course, include the age of the skill and also reviews as users left for a particular skill. And apparently the vetting scheme itself is not that terribly strong either. It was uh, fairly straightforward for these researchers uh, to impersonate a developer. In particular, in their experiment, they used as developer name a Ring. Now Amazon makes these Ring branded cameras and uh, the applications that are offered with Ring are using Amazon as a developer. But of course, for a normal user, it would be logical to expect Ring as developer. And in this case, they did publish a little smart home application, at least that's sort of how they labeled it. Probably the last issue is the least severe one, and that's that many of these uh, skills do not provide a privacy policy. Apparently, Amazon doesn't require one as you're publishing your skill and only a small minority of uh, skills actually include one. And apparently T-Mobile suffered a breach and the result of the breach was that for a small number of customers, pins were leaked. Uh, these pins are commonly used in order to authenticate yourself to the carrier and are one of the main protection mechanisms against SIM swapping attacks. Some news articles suggest that uh, this uh, was actively used in SIM swapping attacks. Uh, the notice that was published with them that doesn't necessarily state that, but does state that affected users should swap their pin. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again 
tomorrow. Bye.